Hey there, this is Rob Caggiano from the band Volbeat here, and I want to talk to you guys about my new Jackson signature model called the Shadowcaster. <laughs> Way back in the day, I was a Jackson player, and I played a guitar called the Outcaster, which is kind of, it was kind of a quirky guitar that, that Jackson put out, I guess, for a year or two. And I was working at a music store back then. It was actually called The Music Store, spelled with a Z. I'll never forget it. And I took that guitar home, you know, came into the shop, and, and I just fell in love with the shape of it. And it wasn't an expensive guitar back then, um, but it was cool. It had, it had a lipstick pickup in the neck, and it had a, had a you know, humbucker in the bridge, but it had like a weird wraparound wraparound bridge, so like intonating it was kind of a nightmare. Didn't really stay in tune too well, but it looked cool as hell and it sounded really cool. And I, I used it live a lot back then, you know, just in local bands and you know, whatever shows I was doing at the time. It just really felt nice and, and just really hung on me, really, you know, hung well, really well on me, very balanced and, you know, all that stuff. So having played a different shape for many years, you know, more of a, a traditional Strat shape, coming back to this shape really feels like home, you know, and I couldn't be more stoked. It's it's awesome, and it really fits aesthetically. I think it really fits um, the music that we're doing now. You know, with with Bowlby and all that stuff, it, it really like captures that vibe. And it, it it's kind of one of those one of those shapes that you know it kind of could do any style really. It, it would it would look cool with, with any style of music. You know, and and I really think that's that's an awesome thing. Um, yeah, almost like it's like a hot rodded classic kind of thing. body was is kind of based on the old guitar I talked about the outcaster but I mean really it's just the shape that that resembles that everything else is totally different you know everything from the cuts I mean there were no cuts on the outcaster it was just kind of a straight body um, this has contours and cuts and uh, the neck is completely different the neck uh, spent a lot of time really kind of dry, trying to dial this thing in the neck angle yeah I mean just th there's definitely uh, Definitely a bunch of bunch of uh, changes over the last year that we made to this thing. Everything, even even to the nut material and, and uh, where the pickups are. That was another thing. You know, we kind of moved those. The bridge. Oh, actually, no, it was the tailpiece we moved. I think because I do a lot of a lot of that kind of stuff live, like in between chords and stuff. And uh, that wasn't sounding right. As as crazy as that might as that might seem, that wasn't sounding right. So we had to move this a little bit. Until it, until it was right, and um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm really, really stoked with where it's at right now. It's totally perfect. You know, obviously, as with any guitar player, I'm sure, you know, tone is really important for me, and there's a certain, like, mojo I look for in a guitar, and I guess in the way it sounds as well, and this totally captures it. You know, it really, really sounds awesome. It just sounds really big and fat and punchy, and the notes just pop out of it. You know, I, I'm loving it. It's interesting, too, because this is an alder body, which I've never really used. And uh, we, we, when we were going through the prototypes and stuff, we, we were trying different woods. And, and um, my older guitars were, were made of a, a wood called sen ash, I believe. And uh, it was very light. You know, it had a, had a cool sound, but it's, it's, I guess, a hard wood to get a hold of, and you can't, you can't get it anymore. So we did a couple of bodies with, uh, with, with swamp ash and mahogany and I think Mike Tempesta suggested we try Alder, and it totally rules. You know, it sounds amazing. It's absolutely perfect. Um, and I don't know if, if it's the shape or, or what, but it just, it just sounds big. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so as I said earlier, we, we have an alder body here. It's a quilted maple top. Uh, the finish is, is, it's called trans purple fade. So you got black into purple, beautiful color. The neck is ebony fingerboard. We got compound radius actually also, I should mention. We have these, uh, these oval inlays here, which light up when, when you put a flashlight on them, they glow in the dark, which is a really cool feature. 
The nut is made of phenolic, which is something very new for me, um, and it seems to be working out great. Uh, let's see, we got the Tone Pros bridge. We got the DiMarzio, Rob Caggiano signature model here in the, in the bridge position. Air Norton in the neck. Uh, DiMarzio Potts, volume tone, five-way selector switch. Oh, this is actually a cool thing that I should mention. So over the years, one of my main problems live, well, just an annoying thing that has always happened to me, was the neck shifting in, in the joint here. Um, I don't know why, why it happens. I, I'm not sure if it's a, a temperature thing or if it's something that I'm doing live, like a certain move or whatever. Like I, I, I tend to jerk the neck a little bit sometimes, but it's been an issue. And when, when that happens, like the intonation's out of whack and everything's out of tune and it's just... It's annoying, and my tech, my tech got really tired of uh, dealing with it. <laughs> so anyway, we came up with this idea where um, these are special screws. I'm not even sure what they're called, but basically, this neck will never move, like ever. <laughs> so that's a really cool thing. I'm a very, I'm very excited about that. And they're also uh, Allen screws as well, which is which is really cool. Makes it a lot easier, and they don't they won't get stripped as easily as. Uh, as, a, as regular Phillips screws. So these guitars uh, are all shipped with Ernie Ball Slinkies, nine to 46. All of the new Volbeat stuff is, is uh, tuned to A440, which is standard. But some of the, well, most of, the, all of the old stuff is actually a tune, tuned the whole step down. So D on the bottom. And for those songs live, I use 10 to 52. Still Ernie Ball Slinkies, which I've been playing now for a few years and I love them. And they're just really amazing and they stay in tune great. And there's something about the tension of those those strings that are well the name says it they're very slinky <laughs> okay so this is the pro version of the guitar the finish is a little bit different it's purple metallic so it doesn't have the fade this is also an amazing color it's kind of like a hot rod color um, same pickup the signature pickup ebony fingerboard it does not have the, the uh, glow-in-the-dark markers. This also has Jackson locking tuners. The, the USA one has Spurzel locking tuners, which I forgot to mention. The neck feels the same. Compound radius. I was pretty blown away when I, when I actually got the prototype for the Pro Series because it, it, it really is an awesome guitar. And, and those guys nailed it. You know, it really, really is great. It's definitely a more, more affordable instrument, but it feels like a Cadillac. It feels amazing. What else is different? I, oh, I guess the, uh, the strap buttons. On the USA version, these are uh, recessed, which is a really cool feature. On the Pro, Pro Series, they're just, uh, you know, standard strap buttons. So. so the body of this guitar is made of mahogany. We have those screws that, you know, really keep the neck stable in the joint here. Um, they're not as heavy duty as the other ones, but they, the neck still will not move. <laughs> so that's a great thing. My, my original old Outcaster um, had kind of a, a weird headstock where it was basically just kind of squared off there like that. So this headstock is kind of based off of uh, an old Surfcaster. And uh, so we kind of took that design and kind of, we, we had to tweak it a little bit for this, for this neck and for the, uh, the distance of the tuning pegs to the, to the bridge. There's so much stuff to think about. <laughs> you know, it's like... As a player, you don't really think about all this stuff and what goes into making an instrument like this. And, you know, for me, it was a really, really huge learning experience, you know, and it was a lot of fun. It was great. Um, but anyway, so yeah, we, uh, we took the, the old Surfcaster headstock shape and just, I guess, shrunk it down a little bit. So it's a little bit more streamlined. Why do I play a purple guitar? Well, it started with a guitar that I acquired years ago, and that became my main guitar that I used, you know, live all over the world with, with Anthrax. Um, so I kind of, you know, people started to know me for the purple guitar, so purple kind of became my color. I love purple. Uh, I've always loved purple. Yeah, so that's, that's basically it. And I, I think this purple, it, it's, it's like the next level 
purple for me <laughs> from all the other guitars I've played in the past. You know, absolutely honored to, to be a part of uh, the Jackson team. And, and, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like a prestige, prestigious pedigree, I guess. And, you know, the, the reputation is, is uh, you know, really high up there. You know, the instruments are flawless. So it feels really good. And I definitely feel like I'm in good company. Yeah.